right, number 27, a line segment has endpoints J, 2, 4, and L, 6, 8. The point K is the midpoint of JL. What is an equation of a line perpendicular to JL and passing through K? All right, well, we have some graph paper, so I'm going to go ahead and draw it out. When in doubt, draw it out. And J is 2, 4, so we go right 2 and then up 4. And we're looking right there for J. And then L is 6, 8, so right 6, 3, 4, 5, 6, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And right there for point L. And it says K is the midpoint of JL. I'm going to go ahead and connect JL. And actually, if you do this on graph paper, it's pretty easy to see that this is going to be the midpoint. Think up to, right to, up to, right to. Yeah, that's going to be our midpoint. Um, but just a reminder on the midpoint formula, you just add up your two x's and divide by 2. So it's 2 plus 6 over 2. And add up your two y's, 4 plus 8, and divide by 2. So that's 8 over 2, which is 4. And 12 over 2, which is 6. And we'll just verify that number. So right 4, up 6. And we were right on. 4, 6. So that's point K. So, so far looking really good. But we need an equation that it's perpendicular to JL and passes through K. So perpendicular means it makes a 90 degree angle with um, JL. So that means the slope is what? The slope for parallel lines is going to be congruent or, or equal to. The slope for perpendicular lines is the opposite reciprocal. Opposite reciprocal. And what that means is you just flip the fraction and change the sign. So what was our slope of the JL? Well, we went up one, right one, up one, right one, up one, right one, consistently. So our slope for JL is one. So if I, I can write that as a fraction as one over one. So what's the opposite reciprocal of one over one? Well, if I flip it, it's still one over one, but I need to take the opposite of it, which means change the sign. So it's a negative 1 over 1 would be the slope of the line perpendicular to that. So I'm looking for a slope of negative 1. All right, since we know the slope is negative 1, these are all my slopes. They're the coefficient of the x or the number in front of the x. And then these are all my y-intercepts. So I can eliminate two choices just by knowing the slope is negative 1. A and B both have a slope of negative 1, and C and D both have a slope of positive 1. So it can't be C, it can't be D. Those lines are actually parallel um, to the line JL. So now it's all about the y-intercept. Now this y-intercept on B says negative 10. That would mean, here's the origin, that it's crossing way down here. And look at that line that we drew. Not even close, huh? That's definitely a big positive number. And actually, if you continue to run that slope up, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, it's going to be right at positive 10. So the answer choice is definitely going to be A, looking at our y-intercept. And I'll give you just one more way to attack this question. Um, for instance, on the y-intercept, we know that 4, 6 is a ordered pair that it crosses through, so we have an x and a y, and we know the slope, which is our m, is negative 1, so if we just write y equals mx plus b, um, and plug in what we have, so y is 6, m is negative 1, x is 4, we can solve for the y-intercept this way, so that would be negative 4 um, equals 6, and then plus b, and then add 4 to both sides, and 
the force cancel and B would be 10. So we solved the y-intercept that way. That just confirms what we already knew, that the y-intercept is 10. All right, number 28, a triangle has vertices of 1, 3, 2, negative 3, and negative 1, negative 1. What is the approximate perimeter of the triangle? Well, since they gave us ordered pairs and we have graph paper, my first thing is just going to be to graph this triangle and see what it looks like. So 1, 3, I go right 1, up 3, and put a point. Uh, 2, negative 3, go right 2, and down 3, put a point. And then negative 1, negative 1 is left 1, and then down 1. And I'm just going to connect those three points and make a triangle. Now, since we're talking perimeter, we're talking about the entire distance all the way around this figure. So in other words, it's the sum of all of the sides. So I'm just going to add up each of the side lengths. Uh, there's no shortcut here because looking at our graph, all of these sides are diagonal lines. None of them are horizontal or, um, or vertical. So I can't just count the units up. For instance, if I had a triangle like this, and I wanted to find the perimeter. That's 2 and that's 2 because it's straight across and straight up and down. But here I have diagonal, so that's not going to work for me. So no shortcut. That's all right. We have a calculator and we know the distance formula. And there's our distance formula. So I'm just going to subtract the x's and square it, subtract the y's and square it, and add them up and then take the square root. So I'm going to start with my um, negative 1, negative 1, and 1, 3. So there's my x, there's my y, there's my x, there's my y. So I'm just going to do negative 1 minus 1 squared plus, and then I have another negative 1 minus 3 squared. And negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2 squared and negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4 and we're going to square it and anytime you square a number it's always going to be positive so we have 4 plus 16 which is 20 and remember we still have that square root so that's the square root of 20 and I'm just going to fill in these distances as I go so that's my first distance and now I need to do that distance formula again to find out this distance and then I'll do it again to find out this distance. So now I'm looking at the 1, 3 and the 2, negative 3. I'm going to do that distance next. So I'm going to start with the 2, negative 3 for my um, beginning points. So I'm going to do 2 minus 1 squared plus and I have to start from over here, so negative 3 minus 3. You just have to be consistent with where you start from. So I started with this ordered pair. And then 2 minus 1 is 1, so that's 1 squared, plus negative 3 minus 3 is negative 6 squared. And now we're looking at 1 plus 36, which is just 37. So that would be the square root of 37. That's just a little bit bigger than 6. Alright, we have one more side length to attack, so I'm looking at the negative 1, negative 1, and the 2, negative 3. So I'm going to start from this ordered pair, doesn't matter which one I start from, and I'm going to do my x minus my other x. So x is 2, so 2 minus, and here we have a negative 1, so we have a double sign there. Recall if you have a double sign, uh, negative, negative, it means plus. And then same thing here, we have negative 3 minus a negative 1. So another double sign. So really that's like one big plus sign here and one big plus sign there. So 2 plus 1 gives us 3 to the second power. And negative 3 plus 1 gives us negative 2 to the second power. I'm going to square each of those, and that gives me 9 plus 4. And then I'm going to add those up, and don't forget the square root. 
So that would be square root of 13. All right, I'm almost done. Now I can get my calculator out. And they do just want the approximate. So I'm just going to type in uh, square root of 20. And to get to that square root button, we just go to the second button first. And then we press X squared. And then we can just type all those in at once, or we can type them in individually and write down the decimals and then add them up. Um, I'm just going to type them all at once and see what I get. So I'm going to hit, again, second square root 20 plus, and then second square root uh, 37 plus, second square root 13, and then I'm going to hit enter. And I got 14.16 when I did that. And just to verify, the square root of 20 was 4.5 about. The square root of 37 is about 6.1. And the square root of 13 is about 3.6. So if you just add up 4.5, 6.1, and 3.6, you should get about... 14. And that's going to be 14.2, which is closest to answer choice B. And when you're looking for perimeter, that would be like fencing in that triangle that we have. How much fence would you need to buy? So that's an application for perimeter. Thanks a lot.